What's up, everybody? What's up, Tim? Moni. We're going to turn the video on for this one. And that's a curtain. There we are. OK. Excellent. Well, here we are. I was thinking, actually, we could even use this whiteboard to, to draw some things out. Look at this, guys. Oh, I, don't know, I don't know how serious y'all are about human design, <laughs> but have you ever wrote the entire body graph out on the most impermanent thing that you could find, which is a whiteboard. Um, anyway, yeah, the whole like sacral thing is all fucked up, but uh, we have the eraser, thank you. <laughs> you just had it ready to go, let's go. All right, bro. All right, so for everyone joining, what's up, good morning. Um, at least it's morning where we are. And which we're in Maui. Maybe let us know where you're, you're calling in from on the, where you at? in the little chat box there. And um, this is just, Kind of the morning ritual that me and Shaolin and Luke have here, so, um, which is we read the transits. We read about the transits because, you know, we all have our body graphs, and um, I just erased the body graph. But anyway, we all have our body graphs, and we're all being conditioned by other people's energies and other people's auras. And oh, come on. we're also being conditioned by the overall transits. And so if you go on the Neutrino app or whichever app you have, Although Neutrino app is our favorite, and Neutrino. you um, go on your My Body Graph or anyone's chart, and then you click the Transit tab, it'll show you the transit columns on the right, where um, you can literally see where what gate the sun is in, what gate the moon is in, and then each of these planets has their own connotations. Which um, Ronan talks about more of that in the Sorcery Channel, the Astrology HD Fusion thing, Astro HD. She talks about how to use like some of the other planets, but primarily here we focus on the sun and the earth because we get 70% of our influencing energy from the sun and the earth. And so currently the sun is in gate 33, which is in the throat, reaching down towards the G center. And then we have gate 19, which is in the root center, reaching up towards the emotional center. And now, you know, there's 64 gates, right? And so through 64 of these gates, we're going to move through roughly two transits a week. And so this is another way to like familiarize yourself with the gates themselves, because we only have to worry about these two. So, you know, this week, really, you have an opportunity to solidify your understanding of gate 33 in the throat and gate 19 in the root by way of the conditioning elements. So one thing that I want to say about the transits is like, you know, you may feel an excess amount of this energy, like 33, for instance, um, Nathan the other day was talking about how uh, 3313, that channel is about like secrets and fellowship. And so, for instance, having the throat active, the 33 of that channel could, for instance, provide you with uh, an excessive energy to like share secrets or spill secrets that maybe are not yours. Um, same thing with 19. 19 would be an approach or a flirtation or a, a gathering of resources and assembling of, um, of powers for a revolution, 49, in the, in the um, solar plexus. And so, you know, you have these energies that are um, present in the collective that are providing us with a conditioning. And really, it's only relevant for the people that are being born. So 33 and 19 are kind of like, it's like a weather pattern that's moving over us. So you might get wet, but it doesn't mean that you're, um, you know, uh, you're always going to be wet, if that makes sense. So like, you don't start a business or you don't... Um, you know, build a relationship purely off of these um, these gates. You want to return to your own strategy and authority. It's just like further tools for differentiation, the same way that my bro Luke here could be a tool to condition me more or to help me decondition. Transits are either going to condition you more, which is conditioning most people because they're not aware of it, or it is um, helping them decondition. So With all that being said, I think we're in tea time. Two? Mm hmm Yeah. So line we're in line. Two. We're in the second line of the day or of the transit. And Luke is gonna read out of the I Ching. I Ching. So we're yeah, we're in gate thirty three. We're in retreat. We are the mountain underneath the heaven. <clears throat> so six in the second place means he holds him fast with yellow ox hide. No one can tear him loose. Yellow is the color of the middle. It indicates that which, that which is correct and in line with duty. 
oxide is strong and not to be torn. While the superior men retreat and the inferior men press after them, the inferior men represented here holds on so firmly and tightly to the superior men that the latter cannot shake him off. And because he is in quest of what is right and so strong in purpose, he reaches his goal. Thus the line confirms what is said in the judgment. In what is small, here equivalent to the in the inferior man, perseverance furthers. Hmm. Look at the judgment again. So judgment, retreat, success. In what is small, perseverance furthers. So the inferior man furthers by grasping onto the superior man. Hmm. It, it, the contrast between like the inferior man grasping onto something super tightly and then the superior man letting go like letting go right because mm -hmm. it's it's in retreating it's, it's retreat yeah yeah okay so that could be a good question to ask yourself like what am i grasping onto really tightly and what am i letting go of um yeah and another thing that i'm seeing too is like the superior man's willing to let go and he's retreating but the inferior man is following the superior man, so he's holding on. So he's technically still retreating, but holding on to whatever it was. Like, I need to be the superior man. Mm. That reminds me of like a Jim Rohn quote. He talked about like, you got, a, you got like your daughter who wants to go to a concert and she's asking you for money. And she comes up and says, Daddy, can we have, you know, $50 to go to the, um, you know, what's it called? The concert. And the dad goes, ah. Oh, fine, here, take the money and go, right? Um, and then there's the other scenario where the dad says, you know, he knows the kids want to go to the concert, but instead of having poor style with it, he, like, gives them the money with good style, right? It's the same money. Like, you're still spending 50 bucks. You're still retreating. But are you retreating, you know, while, you know, in a superior way, which is, like, actually letting go of something and retreating? Or are you... Um, are you holding on to it and mm. being forced to retreat by way of retreat is happening? Like, again, with the transits, it's so much around um, and digesting it is so much around like, this is what is the current state of affairs, right? And so if you don't, um, if you resist the current state of affairs too much, then, um, you know, again, the same. It's like focusing on your healing and now it's like all you talk about is your trauma. People know you by your trauma, right? And so there's energy of like just holding on enough so that you don't like fall off of it and completely lose track of it. That's kind of why we have these talks. So it's like you can, you know, get a glimpse of it, um, but then it's not necessarily controlling your entire day because even just the awareness, you'll see things where it's like, oh, this is a place where I'm hanging on to something. But the transits is telling me to, um, to retreat. So, okay, what am I going to do? What does my strategy and authority say? Do I stay here? Uh-huh. Okay, looks like I stay here. Because again, the transit has, a, has an energy. It's like a friend that's, that would always tell you a certain thing, right? Because that's what they would do in this situation, but it's not mm. necessarily what you would do. So it's important to, again, treat the transits like that weather and be like, yes, it's going to guide me and I'm going to be prepared, but ultimately I'm still going to make decisions with my own strategy and authority. So um, 33, line two within the rave, um, calendar, which this is in this book, which if you guys haven't already bought this book, I definitely recommend this is a great book. It's also available on our online resources for free. Um, but line two is called Surrender, the recognition that surrender to superior forces can be an opportunity to expand one's own strength and eventually triumph, embracing powerful forces in order to lay the foundation for future success. That's the exaltation, a good sign. And the exaltation would be in Jupiter. Um, and then in um, is that Neptune, yeah, Neptune. Um, unlike the, this is the detriment, let's be like the bad side. Um, unlike the reasoned and calculated surrender above, the deeper and personal surrender, the feeling that one's original position was a delusion and the impressionability that makes right. A public embrace of powerful forces and a private resentment of their power. Yeah, so this is about integrity. It's like, do the people on the outside know how you feel on the inside. There will be that extra um, voice in you today that wants to tell them. But again, if, there, if there's no invitation in your projector, don't tell them. If there's nothing to respond to in your generator, don't tell them. If, um, you know, as a manifester, like your authority doesn't line up to initiate, don't tell them. 
right? You still got to use your strategy. This is just adding um, energy to it. And so like, for instance, you know, um, you have these gates defined, Luke, mm -hmm. and then I don't, but I have their harmonic gates. So these gates actually, they, they create some definition in my centers for me. I have 49 and I have 13. And so when the, with these transits active, I have full channels now, which again, means even more so to be, um, you know, be mindful that I don't, you know, build a business or make a move or do something that puts me in a position where I have to maintain this energy consistently because I'm not going to be able to, because it, the consistency of the energy is, is thanks to the transits, um, which again, is, it's like, it's a subtle difference, but you know, knowing that you're going to experience something for a week and thinking that you're going to experience something for the rest of your life, there's two very different approaches to that. So, hmm. um, yeah. Any, uh, anything to add to, to that? That's pretty clear. Sweet. All right, let's go to 19. 19. Got and just for those that aren't, aren't aware, the I Ching is what um, Ra used to come up with um, all the gates and all the channels in, uh, in human design. So mm -hmm. this is kind of like the source material. And as you can tell, it's like very poetic and, uh, you know, uh how you say it's 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 written in chinese so this is a translation of that and then for for human design that would be another translation on top of this english translation of the original chinese I Ching, which the original chinese I Ching was a translation of like the systems within nature so further translations and further decrypting of the of the stuffs yeah and this is what the book looks like. The inside kind of cover. I don't know if that's going to show up at all. Oh, that's there. Yes, there you go. And the outside doesn't really. It says on the side what it is. Okay, we're 19. The joyous lake below the receptive earth. Um, let's go to the second line here. So nine in the second place means joint approach, good fortune, everything furthers. When the stimulus to approach comes from a high place, and when a man has the inner strength and consistency that need no admonition. That's an interesting word. I haven't seen that before. Admonition. Yeah. Ad admonition. Yeah. A D M O N I T I O N. <laughs> admonition. Good fortune will ensue. Nor need the future cause any concern. He is well aware that everything earthly is transitory. And that descent, and that a descent follows upon every rise, but need not be confused by this universal law of fate. Everything serves to further. Therefore, he will travel the paths of life swiftly, honestly, and valiantly. So yeah, in relation to like retreating, it's like being superior knows that even though possibly it's a time to retreat, it's knowing that there's an ebb and flow, there's a valley, and there's a peak. So being able to know when, okay, now's the time, good, a good time to retreat so that there's not any bumps in the road. Right. Or like we have to gather resources or for whatever, for whatever reason that, uh, that that one, uh, is retreating. That's interesting. It's, I mean, and this is, this is kind of the essence of the hermit line, mm -hmm. right? Is that like, sometimes you have to hermit, um, for different reasons. Uh, but ultimately, uh, understanding that retreat is like a natural part of the world like a lot of flowers will close up during the nighttime or animals will like chickens will retreat into the trees and sleep in the trees you know and so retreat is a natural part of life and there has definitely been like there has with a lot of things a um deflation or an inflation of its value with um with little context as to why or um, to what end and oftentimes because we live in you know uh how you say a technological capitalistic all these labels basically is saying there's a bunch of greedy people that um are not really in connection with the earth or themselves or spirit uh that there is you know certain ideologies and, and pieces of nature that get twisted and manipulated and so you know, again, with human design, at least for me, it's always been an invitation to kind of return to the natural way of doing things as natural as can be. And um, yeah, spending time to reflect on 
what energy we are uh, experiencing from the heavenly bodies and the earthly bodies is definitely not something I grew up with. Uh, and so I'm excited to actually grow up with it and raise my daughter with it and be with my friends with it, you know? So um, any reflections on the 19 from the I Ching? Or should we go for the, the raise? No, basically just, yeah, it's the approach on how to retreat. Nailed the head. Nailed it on the head there. All right. So then line two service of gate 19, which in, in, um, in the, uh, the book of human design, gate 19, it's called approach or wanting. And it's that all things are interrelated is apparent and manifested through the action of approach. Mm -hmm. So line two is service, which is the dedication of personal resources as a result of external contact. In the exaltation, it's dedicated dedication and service to the highest values, the energy that wants to be of service. In the detriment, it's protracted indecision, but given the nature of this position, eventual compliance, the need to be wanted that will eventually turn its energy into service. So this is like, this whole day is just about style. It's just about like what's in front of you, um, you know, and in a way it's like, are you able to let go of it or are you able to be of service without having this like internal like eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. and I would say even like it's not even more it's it's kind of just about accepting like maybe you do have that internal like oh, I don't really want to do this energy right mm -hmm. and um again that could be the transit so you might ask yourself if you have that energy like oh, I don't really want to do this like I forget someone was like oh you would do that Marco right as I'm about to um to go into work and so there there might be this energy of like oh like I have to go to work and there's this other thing that I like really want to do. Um, and so being able to take account of that. And one thing that um, one of my teachers told me was really important. He goes, the test of an educated person is not how much they know. It's whether or not they're able to um, neither re reject or accept an idea outright, but the ability to entertain an idea. And then from there, if they're able to learn that thing, unlearn it and relearn something else, like that's an educated person. And so a lot of human design is, is deconditioning. But in order to decondition something, you have to be able to accept what is actually there. And a lot of people, they, one of the reasons why their deconditioning halts or doesn't start or starts to kind of like reverse and they go back into conditioning just through a different person or lens or whatever, is because of that unwillingness to accept what it is that you find within your experiment. It's like if you're boiling something and there's a rock in your, in your boiling pot and that rock will eventually fuck things up, you could choose to ignore it and be like, oh, there's no rock in there. There's no rock in there. Or there's no, um, there's no uh, unwarranted, uh, how you say, unwarranted approach or unwarranted, um, what is this one? Unwarranted retreat. There's no, none of that. Uh, I'm just going to ignore it. And then eventually it blows your experiment up. You know, it comes out sideways. So it's better to um, accept and know that there's a snake in the room rather than to be in ignorance with the lights off. Because it's much easier to know if the snake is going to bite you in the face if the lights are on, which might be more uncomfortable. But alas, snakes in the grass. Snakes in the grass can't bite your toes. But snakes in the grass find the people hiding in the mountains. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now what we do, that was, that was the T in transits, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pull an oracle, uh, um, just a, a, um, a, a guiding hexagram for this day for um, 33.2 and 19.2. Mm -hmm. And um, to do that, we're going to use the coin method. And shall I? We need Unomos coin. Yes, excellent. One more. Bro, where are my coins at? I don't know, but there's two. And I got some of my holsters. Left side, back zipper. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's hella coins in here. Hella coins. I don't throw coins. coins away. All right. So, yeah, I don't know. We haven't looked at the chat. How are we all doing? Hey, everyone's good. I think you're just, uh -huh, beautiful. You're just pretty yeah. good. Super cute. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys have any, like, insights on what you're feeling with these transits feel free to throw in the chat we'd love to see it yeah and, like relate with you and yeah talk about things sweet all right so now we're gonna 
We're going to draw out a hexagram. And the way that we do this for anyone that wants to learn how to do this, it's so simple. It's the most simple thing in the world. You get three coins. Okay. They just have to have a heads and a tails, you know, like a normal coin. And then you're going to just throw them. So I'm going to throw them right now. And then oh, I'm going to, it's a good example. Oh, it's okay. So I'm going to flip the camera around. Oh, we got 13 people in here now. What's up, everybody? Hey. Um, okay, so what we got is three heads. Y'all can see that? So heads are three points. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then Luke is going to draw out the first line of the hexagram. You start at the bottom. And when you get three of the same kind, so if you get three heads, you're going to put a dot next to it. And if you get um, three tails, you would put um, a broken line and then a dot next to it. So we're going to throw it again. This is for the second line, which is what we're in today. And we got two, four, five, six, seven. So that's an odd number. That's going to be a unbroken line. That's yang. Even numbers are broken lines. Odd numbers are um, solid lines. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's yin. So that's our first um, unbroken or broken line. What do we got? Three the greater yang. Okay, cool. So we have a yin or a yang line with a dot next to it. Now we're doing. Another yang, another greater yang. Three heads? Yep. Damn, son. It's a yang kind of day, baby. And then, so that's five lines? Yep. So the last line is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yin, so broken line. All right. So now what happens is any lines that have a dot next to it are going to change. So for instance, that yang is going to be a yin line now. That yang is going to be a yin line now. The other yin will remain the same. That yang will remain the same. And then that yang at the bottom becomes a yin line. So this is our, our pull. And then this is the changing hexagram. And then the reading, we're going to read both of them and kind of like, you know, scrape some information from both of them. So Luke is right now looking up the um, what this hexagram is. The eight. It's lake on lake, baby. 58, baby. Lake on lake. By the way, thanks, Chris, for this awesome image. Oh, yeah. This is super cool. This is super helpful. I love that. Chris, you're the best. So the way that you're finding it is you're looking at the bottom hexagram, which is yang, yang, yin. And then we're finding where that is on here. Yang, yang, yin. Okay, so we know it's going to be up in here somewhere. And then we're looking for the upper trigram right there, which is also yang, yang, yin. Right there. 58. Boom. The joyous. The joyous. All right, let's go ahead and find the other one real quick. So and the got... six, Mayor is asking why the six lines. I actually don't know the specifics around that. I would say like um, something along the lines of... Um, there are six lines. Uh, no, triangles are the most stable shape in the world. Um, you know, you got like, you know, the Holy Trinity, you've got the pyramids at Giza. You, it's just like literally the most stable shape in the world. Uh, duality is cool. That's just a line. But once you have three, now you have the ability to move upward or ascend in, um, in, in the world. And so... That would be one of my reasons. And th these hexagrams are just built of one, two, three. That's one trigram. And then the second trigram sitting above it. But that would be a really cool... Um, I don't exactly know what the significance of the, the three is. I just know that significance... Uh, the three has significance um, in general. If you would want to look that up and share as to why that is, that would be really cool. Um, okay, so we have 58 and 7. The, the army, which seven is the pairing gate. Seven is right here, y'all. And this was the, the pairing gate for the last transit, 31-7 right there. Currently, we're in 33, which is right there in the throat. And then 19 is over here. Um, all right, so let's do... 
Let's do the reading now, yeah? Yeah. All right. So 58, we got the joyous lake. We got lake on lake, lakes on lake. So this hexagram-like sun is one of the eight formed by doubling of a trigram. The trigram tweet denotes the youngest daughter. It is symbolized by the smiling lake, and its attribute is joyousness. Contrary to appearances, it is not the yielding quality of the top line that accounts for joy here. The attribute of the yielding or dark principle is not joy, but melancholy. However, joy is indicated by the fact there are two strong lines within, expressing themselves through the medium of gentleness. True joy, therefore, rests on firmness and strength within, manifest, manifesting itself outwardly as yielding and gentle. Yeah. Uh, true joy, therefore, rests on firmness and strength within, manifesting itself outwardly as yielding and gentle. Yeah, so it's like having a, a good, strong frame for Kung Fu, but then appearing as a Tai Chi master. Mm. Like I could rip your cheek off. But first, oh, your I will face off. But first, I will pet the horse. Yes. You know. uh, Let's see the judgment, the joyous success, perseverance is favorable. The joyous mood is infectious and therefore brings success. But joy must be based on steadfastness if it is not to degenerate into uncontrolled mirth. Truth and strength must dwell in the heart while gentleness reveals itself in social intercourse. In this, way, in this way, one assumes the right attitude toward God and man and achieves something. Under certain conditions, intimidation, oh, it's just broken up, it looks weird. Intimidation without gentleness may achieve something momentarily, but not for all time. When on the other hand, the hearts of men are won by friendliness that are led to take all hardships upon themselves willingly, and if need be, will not shun death itself, so great is the power of joy over men. <clears throat> hmm. I like that. It's a deep one. There's a lot there. Yeah. But I mean, it's all ultimately the same. So this line... Joy, how to be joyful. Yeah, how to be joyful. So under certain conditions, intimidation without gentleness may achieve something momentarily, but not for all time. Something about that line. Like, when you intimidate somebody without having a gentle, like, approach to it, approach like our transit today, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's only going to last momentarily. You know, like if I'm driving down the road and you know, somebody maybe cuts me off and I honk my horn and look in the bird and say, fuck you. It's only going to momentarily influence them. And then they're going to be like, man, that guy sucked. Why did he do that to me? Whereas if, you know, maybe I pull up by him like, hey, I hope you have a good day. Watch where you're going next time. So if I do it with a gentle approach, then it's going to have a deeper impact on them. Be like, oh, that guy was really nice. Mm. And yeah, I, I kind of cut him off. That was annoying. Yeah, I'm a dick. I'm gonna go learn human design. I'm gonna dick boy and learn about myself. <laughs> I'm gonna read the I Ching. That reminds me of um, something from 47, which is um, oppression and exhaustion. Um, I pulled this one, was it two days ago or yesterday? No, it was yesterday, or it was two days ago. But there was something about being cheerful despite the danger. Um, it kind of mm. sounds like delusion. But to me, I'm like, to maintain your joy within the context of whatever is going on like regardless of the circumstances to maintain your joy because it's like you're you know for instance there's this conversation a lot of people are being offended um and they act they act like they've been offended as if they had no choice in it for instance you might say marco your hair is ugly and i can choose to be offended and engage in it and be like well why do you think my hair is ugly like i really pay attention to my hair i don't necessarily pay a lot of attention I do brush it often though, but it'd be like, I brush my hair often, you know, like I'm offended. I'm choosing to be offended rather than saying, oh, thanks for your opinion. And just being on about my joyful way. So one, I think probably part of this, and this is, this is only um, half of the, um, of the reading in the sense that we got to read um, seven as well to kind of get um, some more context because this eaching does change. But a uh, big thing about joy is, um, 
again, having the stable foundations for joy, not necessarily just like being delusional. And when you have that joy, understanding that people cannot take that joy from you unless you surrender your stance. Yeah, like 100%. That. That's a good one. Yeah, and just to reply to you, I think it says mirror. Numerology does the pentagram thing too, like the triangle upright and then upside down. One is conscious, one is subconscious. Maybe it's something similar. So that brings to my thought is like when we're looking at these hexagrams, we've got three sets of lines on top of three sets of lines. So we've got the heaven on top of the earth. So yeah, there is truth in that. Definitely. Like it's, uh, we've got the conscious, we've got the unconscious, we've got the earth, which is our bodies here. And then we've got the heaven, which is above looking down upon the earth. So yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, it's all linked together. I mean, numerology is joined up in here and the human design as well. <clears throat> I'm going to read the image on this and then we'll move to seven. So lake resting on the other. The image of the joyous, thus the superior man, joins with his friends for discussion and practice. A lake evaporates upwards and thus gradually dries up. But when two lakes are joined together, they do not dry up so readily, for one replenishes the other. Mm. It is the same in the field of knowledge. Knowledge should be a refreshing and vitalizing force. It becomes so only through stimulating intercourse with congenial friends with whom one holds discussion and practices application of the truth of life, which is what we're doing That's right this. now. That's this. Yeah, I read ahead and I was like, oh, I gotta share this. Is funny. <laughs> so in this way, learning becomes many sided and takes on a cheerful lightness. Whereas there's always something ponderous, there's already water in there, and one sided about the learning of the self taught. Thank you. Yeah. What that? Read that last line again. Oh, yeah. So, in, the, in this way, learning becomes many sided and takes on a cheerful lightness, whereas there's always something ponderous and one sided about the learning of the self taught. So, like, if I was just going to take this I Ching book and be like, I'm going to read all this. I don't have like as much insight and understanding if I if I didn't do it with Marco here. But then we take it a step even further and share it with you guys. Like we're still learning so much about the I Ching, you know. It's my first time reading Gate 58. It's gonna be my first time reading Gate 7. You know, there's it's a lot to learn. But then since we're doing it in this way all together, it just has a, a larger impact. We're just lakes filling each other up right now. Mm, I like that. And also one of the things too, like um, the moderators, Chris, Ori, yourself, Prana, Ronan, uh, you know, these are all people that, um, when I first started the discord before there was, you know, 600 people here, um, it was, you know, 10, 15 people. And they were the ones that were excited to, you know, have a community, mm -hmm. um, just like I was. And, uh, you know, None of us were like masters of Discord, but I'm learning how to use bots and stuff. Like this is going to be recorded, which is awesome, and then it's going to be posted later. I still haven't figured out exactly how to make it so we can listen on our apps, but we can listen. To, there's a app that Chris posted that you can download that will play it. But anyway, I digress. Um, the ability to share this is um, I'm really excited about it because I do know like some people are just like going to work or doing something and they, they don't necessarily have time to do this, but they can plug their headphones in and, and drop in with us. So it's just really exciting. So a couple Chris threw in there. I love that. In 19, it mentioned something about joint approach as well. Your approach of retreating into the I Ching and transits is through community. Yeah. And Prana says here, does traditional I Ching look at the trigrams like line one, two, and three, four, and five, six? HD relates these trigrams to the awareness centers of the body graph one, two, or splenic, three, four, Ajna, five, six, or solar plexus. Prana says, gotta run. Maybe we can answer that for him. Love you, bro. Thank you for bringing that yeah. through. Um, That's super cool. I love that because, <clears throat> you know, in a way, the I Ching is it's just awareness. You know, it's, it's not necessarily action. We have to take the action. Or we have to forge our own identities or speak about it. And so, um, you know, in, in terms of one and two, the investigator hermit, like those being um, splenic energies. I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, and he's asking too, like, does, does the I Ching 
look at this like that? I would say probably not because th then this one of the things like the, um, the mm -hmm. gems on the floor that Ra kind of picked up and started playing around with and molded into the human design system is like there's dots here that are not necessarily being connected directly within the I Ching. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I don't know that, but I can see how Ra could look at the six hexagrams and be like, oh, we have three awareness centers that's, you know, a polarity within, within each of them. Yeah, and I also, you know, reading the lines more uh, once we're going through the days, I feel like the the writings about the different lines actually like sync up with the different like you know first line, second line, third line, being the investigator, the hermit, the martyr. You know, like, totally. There's an energy behind it, so that's probably what Ra picked up on, and then. Yeah, I mean, that would be that would be a good little investigation if someone wants to go um, investigate that. I'm probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> definitely if someone wants to go investigate that, I don't know exactly where you would look, maybe like in the actual I Ching mean, book, talking about the lines. Um, yeah, again, there's, there's still so much that um, I don't know about the I Ching, that we don't know about the I Ching, that we're exploring through, through doing this way. And I think I said it, what was it a couple of days ago, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to break the whole like coaching industry by like making this community fucking awesome. So, um, you know, in a way I would be so stoked if people started, you know, learning here and then through this community felt empowered to then be a, a local lightning rod for human design. And then they can begin sharing information with, um, with their community through this community, empowering and helping to educate them and guide them along the path. Um, that's like an ultimate vision for me. And that kind of like goes against the, how you say, what my business strategy might ought to be, which would be just to sell you guys a bunch of more shit. Um, yeah, I'm not necessarily into that. <laughs> we're, we're doing something else. So anyway, that was 58, Joyous Lake. Um, let's move on to um, Gate 7, shall we? Yep. <clears throat> mm, seven, we got shit, the army. So we've got water below earth. This hexagram is made up of the trigram Khan, water, and Kun, earth. And thus it symbolizes the groundwater stored up in the earth. In the same way, military strength is stored up in the mass of the people. Invisible in times of peace, but always ready for use as a source of power. This, the attributes of the two trigrams are danger inside and obedience outside. This points to the nature of an army, which at the core is dangerous, while discipline and obedience must prevail outside. Of the individual lines, the one that controls the hexagram is the strong nine in the second place, to which the other lines, all yielding, are subordinate. This line indicates a commander, but it stands in the middle of one. It stands in the middle of one of the two trigrams. But since it is in the lower rather than upper trigram, it represents not the ruler, but the efficient general who maintains obedience in the army by his authority. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so groundwater. That's a really cool way to look at the army. It's the, the water being stored in the earth that's ready at any moment to be used as a source of power. It's like a it's like a um a farmer militia where it's like everyone in the society is like a farmer and contributes to society, but when then when it wartime comes on, everyone knows how to fight, you know? And um you see this a lot in movies where it's like, we're just farmers. And they're like, Well, today we're warriors and I'm gonna teach you 17 years of training in four and a half minutes of montage. You know what I mean? So um but in the in, in the reality sense of it, um the army needs a general. And the seven and 31, 31 is that general and seven is the, the army, or rather I would even say is the, um, the loyalty that the army has to the general. At least that's how it, that's how it applies to human design. Um, yeah, I'm yeah that makes me here. think too, like you brought up the farming. Um, so many of the weapons in Kung Fu are just tools that farmers use. Right like pitchfork or uh scythe yeah. yeah all different kinds of things i wonder if we could attract someone in the group who studied I Ching or chinese medicine who can add to this that yeah. would be awesome um wonderful you know and like that's that's um a great who's that angel angel of course angel's always bringing the fucking fire suggestions um 
yeah if, if you guys know anybody um or anybody that uh is, you know fits that description they're more than welcome to to join the community um one thing that i'm i'm present to is like uh i really want to reward participation in this community and so you know someone coming in as an authority like the authority is not necessarily for me to assign because i'm the the admin right the authority is on is this person showing up and bringing value and contributing naturally of their own accord? Because, you know, I'm not out here employing anybody. This is all, you know, Chris is a volunteer, Luke's a volunteer, I'm a volunteer. No one's getting paid for any of this. This is just for the sake of our learning and for the sake of sharing our learning. And then also now I feel like the army really resonates because part of me is like, we're building a conscious army here on, on Discord. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually, again, like I was saying, the intention is that Hopefully, through the education and the community and the support that you get here, you'll be able to be that in the real world for your friend group and your family and your workplace, and um, you know, ultimately, like create your life with um, the frameworks that um, that we all can collectively look at and ponder and and learn together. So, um, yeah, I would love to have like an actual eaching expert. Um, and in Chinese here. medicine too. Yeah, and Chinese amazing. medicine. Um, cool. All right. With anything else, read the image maybe. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, mm. Or did you already read the image? No, I just read the main. Look at the judgment. Real quick. Okay. Cool. So the right, army, okay. the army needs perseverance and a strong man. Good fortune without blame. So yeah, like you were just saying, like we're all studying this together. It's like we're all becoming. Um, we're all becoming generals by learning this together, you know, becoming human design generals, eating generals, just by studying and practicing. Keep that in mind. An army is a mass that needs organization in order to become a fighting force. Without strict discipline, nothing can be accomplished, but this discipline must not be achieved by force. It requires a strong man who captures the hearts of the people and awakens their enthusiasm. Nah. In order that he may develop his abilities, he needs the complete confidence of his ruler, who must entrust him with the full responsibility as long as the war lasts. But war is always a dangerous thing and brings with it destruction and devastation. Therefore, it should not be resorted to rashly, but, like a poisonous drug, should be used as a last recourse. Yeah, so it's like the difference between medicine and poison is in the dose. Mm. It's like how how hard are you gonna strike, or do you strike at the right time? Right. What comes up for me with that is like there's certain people that will like look at human design, and they'll be like, "Oh my god, I need to like learn everything," and they'll learn everything and they'll do everything, but they still won't practice their strategy and authority. And that's one thing that um, you know, for me, I have a lot of judgments about the person that does that, and. Um, you know, I, I would hope that those judgments inspire them to actually just practice the basics so that they actually can know everything and be embodied in it rather than just having a bunch of information in their head. But in terms of like the dosage and war as a last result, the deconditioning process is kind of like a war and a battle. And you can get caught up. I think I might need more water in it. Um, but you can get caught up very much so in like, Oh, I'm not an authority in this. I don't know everything. And like again, like if you're at where you're at and you're resisting where you're at, or you're ignoring, or you're um you're over judging or overly critical of where you're at, there's no way that you're able you're gonna be able to ascend from where you're at. Or maybe you're too high and you need to descend. You know, it's not just about going up, up, up and transcending. Sometimes it's about descending into um into your life. Uh but when it comes to waging war on the conditioned self, there are diplomacies and agreements as opposed to just, I'm going to destroy and kill my ego and I'm going to completely drop all my friends and I'm going to completely shift. You can do that. If your authority tells you to do that, you can do that. However, my reflection is one that that sometimes causes more chaos and more confusion when if you just start implementing small things like, oh, you start practicing your sacral calibrations or you start using, you know, as a projector, you start using a soundboard, right? Or as a manifester, you know, you start taking account, you find your counsel, right? The people who 
Um, you're going to allow into your aura because you have this blocked aura. Or as a reflector, you're going to start tracking the transits like I do. You know, you're going to start actually using your strategy and authority as opposed to just burning down the entire village. Because something out of the, um, the art of war, they say, is if you have to destroy a city to capture it, you didn't take a city. You took a, you took a ruin. It's, it's much it's far superior to use diplomacy to claim a territory or to win a battle as opposed to needing to summon the army and rouse the troops and turn them and turn the farmers into warriors. It's like, again, you want them to be ready, but you also want them to um, be farmers, to do the thing that makes them happy and fulfills them and brings them peace. And so feeds them and feeds everybody. Yeah. So with this, there's an excitement because I'm like, yeah, everyone's warriors, but I'm also like, hey, let's be farmers. And then if you need to turn the warrior on, then then you can use whatever is in your hand as a weapon. But until then, farm your awareness with human design. Don't you don't need to con there's not necessarily anything to conquer. And when danger threatens, every peasant becomes a soldier. When the war ends, he goes back to his plow. Because you're, you're going to have to come back to like actually being alive, not necessarily being at wartime with yourself. And I see this a lot within like medicine communities and no shame on anyone who's, who's working with um, plant medicines or anything. But there are a handful of people who within that um, realm are completely addicted to plant medicine and they're doing work, more work, more work. I'm doing work for my ancestors. It's like, well, have you enjoyed the work that you've done for yourself or are you just taking it upon yourself to heal the entire world mm -hmm. and dragon you read my mind it's better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener of war that's exactly what this is talking about here precisely it's being prepared for war by training but also tending to the garden so. yeah which little plug here anyone that wants to um train the way that we train in a couple of years, there'll be a there'll be a kung fu school. I guess they could sign up with kung fu New Mexico. No? You could okay. you could sign up um, with my masters and tell him that I sent you, and he would be super stoked. <laughs> um, so if you do want to train kung fu, what is that? Kung Shaolin kung or Chinese Shaolin kung fu? Chinese Shaolin kung fu. Post that in the in the. I'll post it in the general chat later. Um, um, but and yeah, then the biomechanics as well, um, which I have a really silly name for it. It's in the form. It's called Work Out For Me, Work Out For Me, Work Out For Me. It's a J. Cole song reference. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to make an actual, I'm going to probably dress that up today a little bit better. But walking, running, and throwing, um, these are the three things that make us human. Um, if we're able to train in those ways as opposed to like, you know, doing a bunch of yoga or doing a bunch of CrossFit or bodybuilding or football or basketball, anything, like the postures and the patterns within walking, running, and throwing are our foundational pieces and so if you, if you want to or you're looking for a way to train that is as close to what nature intended for our bodies to be doing as possible it's walking running and throwing and we have an archive of like it's like a virtual gym that you guys can join so yeah you got a point mere yoga is good it's great for your body but you can't just do yoga because you're just going to become flimsy and loose. At least not in the sense that we do it in the Western world today. Like, right. if you just do the flexible, stretchy yoga, yeah, it's going to make your body feel good for right. us, uh, like a certain amount of time. But yoga was intended to do with dynamic tension and strength, which is like what we're doing with biomechanics, even within Kung Fu as well. Mm -hmm. Kung Fu actually comes directly from yoga. Buddharma taught the Chinese monks the 49 I Chin Ching which is the yoga-like postures that are done with dynamic tension. And those guys became yoked. They didn't need to lift weights. Yeah. And then also yoga also was intended as a way to strengthen the body so that they could sit in meditation for longer. Um, so with, yeah, with all that being said, it's like, you know, training biomechanics really just makes your yoga better. Yeah. You know, it makes your CrossFit better. It makes everything else you do better because it doesn't matter what you do or where you do it or who teaches it, you gotta walk there mm -hmm. or you gotta run there, right? You walk to your car, get in your car, drive to your yoga studio or you walk into your living room and then you do your yoga flow there. So there's, uh, you know, again, a foundational piece around walking, running and throwing where it's like, you can't, if someone can't walk, run and throw, if you think about it, and this is, uh, this is like a very brutal realist way of thinking about it, but if someone can't walk, run and throw, unless there's somebody who can walk, run and throw, that person is going to die. So 
Yeah. With that being said, it's just like, again, the warrior plug is like, if you want to be a warrior in a garden, is like, we have a warrior training grounds for you if you want to do that. Um, and of course, you know, you're welcome to do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever, whatever works for you. And, and the thing about yoga too is like, like I did yoga um, a lot at the beginning of my spiritual awakening. And um, I got, like Luke was saying, I got like really loose and kind of messed up. My I was doing yoga and rock climbing. There was like a, a gym that I was doing that at. And I would come out of yoga super flexible. And I got injured because I was like in super bendy world. And then now I'm in like dynamic rock climbing world. And I did something with my bendy self that my muscles couldn't actually support. And I tweaked out my shoulder. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things that's like, Again, you know, you can have an army, but without the general, the army is dangerous. Or you could have a general, but without the army, the general is not necessarily um, able to do anything. And so this is part of this, um, you know, return here is like, you, you got to have acknowledgement of both. Got to have the strong line or else the weak lines will just all crumble. Yeah. Because right. like in this hexagram right here, we only have one strong, uh, one strong line. So if that strong line were broken... Yeah, then it would, it would be the receptive. It would be receptive. It's huh. really different. <clears throat> Which is a totally different energy. Oh, yeah. Man, this was a good one. Angel said, makes me think of Woodstock song by Joni Mitchell, Get Back to the Garden. Uh, I queued that one up on my Spotify because I want to hear that. It sounds dope. I say, and spirit only facts. Yoga combined with breathwork is amazing. Isn't there a book? <laughs> Isn't there a book about natural athletes? I'm gonna find it again. There's definitely a book saying exactly what you are. Yeah. So it's it's called it's called biomechanics, um, which is the study of how life works, and specifically, um, what we've studied would be um, like functional patterns. So specifically, looking at the fastest walkers, runners, and throwers in the world, or the best walkers, runners, and throwers in the world, and dissecting their patterns. So what moves first? Oh, their pinky moves, you know, like stuff like that. Then their toes move and then their arms move and then their chest rotates and then they take their steps. So a lot of us are not, again, really thinking about that in general. Um, but again, when it comes to being a human being, like what is more natural than walking, running and throwing, breathing, eating, making love? You know, there's a lot of things that are very natural to being a human being, things that are not natural necessarily driving, uh, being on a smartphone. Um, you know what there's tons of unnatural things um in terms of practices and things that we can do that we will then associate and identify with it's a conditioning so again if you only do yoga and your whole identity is yoga right then it's like now you have just you know pigeonholed yourself or your whole identity is crossfit you, you just pigeonholed yourself because there's a lot more to you than just that one thing but that's people are looking to be conditioned so that they can fit in in a homogenized world uh, but we already in our differences we are we already have our tribes included so for instance if you're the kind of person that you know you like waking up in the morning but everyone around you doesn't like waking up in the morning you know one of the invitations were would be if you really like waking up in the morning what would it be like if you were surrounded by people that also liked waking up in the morning and doing the things that you do naturally not because that's your partner or whatever, your dad or whatever, it's just because that's what they actually like to do, my invitation would be go find those people or rather make some room in your life so that you're not surrounded by people that don't necessarily resonate with you. Um, and again, be tactful in the way that you do it. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be all at once. Um, doesn't even have to all be right now. You could just energetically start to shift yourself and then see what happens in your physical reality. And or... You can embrace the hermit within and wake up by yourself. Yes, indeed. So there's, there's a lot of ways, um, you know, to be creative about it. And that's, that's the, probably the bigger piece of it. And I'm happy joy came up because um, that's, that's one of my biggest intentions with this community is for it to be joyful. So it's like, you know, I picture some of y'all out there like getting off work or maybe just going into work. And being like, oh, I'm so excited to like check my phone and, 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 you know, say what's up to my community because there's, there's, you know, real people on the end, obviously, like we're, we're real here. And then all the all out there are real. So uh, we have a handful of bots in here, obviously helping us recording and things like that. But for the most part, most of us are real. And so, you know, the invitation is to, you know, bring your joy here. There's places for, um, 
bringing your sorrow and your grief and your emotions as well. This is not therapy. I mean, as far as I know, no one in here is like an actual clinical therapist. Um, but you know, that's the thing is, is, you know, if you're sick, you don't necessarily need a doctor. You just need to, to, to see what's going on. And for someone that has been sick in the same way that you are, or know someone in that way there, you know, there's guidance that we can offer each other. And so we're not here to fix each other so much as we are to, um, invite each other into realizing like, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, if you're physically ill, like, you know, go see a doctor, but if you know, if you've got like emotional energy that needs to vent, there's an emotional channel for that. If you've got, you know, um, splenic stuff going on, like you're sick, you post in the splenic section. If you're like, um, you know, I have some stuff going on with career post in the career section. You know, again, this is a, this is a place to, um, bring your joy. And ultimately the endeavor is to, um, like the, the joyous Lake 58, which we just pulled here, Lake Lake is for, um, my joy to become now your joy and your joy to become my joy and just let it be infectious like that. All right. Well, I think that's it guys. Um, Lake Lake, Lake, Lake army. Big love to you guys. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's see how many people we still got here. Ten. What's up, Eric? <clears throat> Eric hey, with a C. Eric, for those of you that man? don't know, Eric with a C, that's an alias. He, he really goes by zero point, and he's a filthy bass producer. Um, uh, maybe post your SoundCloud or something, Eric, um, yeah, so we can vibe out. Um, but big love to you guys. Um, we'll see you later. Uh, and I'm also going to make a like a suggestions channel. So for things that you want to see that we have a capacity to bring through, um, we're going to go ahead and bring that. Um, yeah, that's it. Catch you guys later. Bye, you. Bye. Big love. Have good days. Make good choices. <laughs>